Hello everybody, my name is Robert Dunt from Art Top 10 and I'm very pleased this evening to be chatting with Peter Mongman. Peter, hello. Hi, thanks for inviting me and thank, thank you everyone else for turning up and, and, well, spending a bit of time in my studio, I guess. <laughs> Absolutely, no, it's classic, it's lovely. We've all got a sort of virtual uh, experience of your studio, which we will, we will have a look around a little bit later. So I thought to start off, why don't you just, for everybody who doesn't know in detail, just give us a little run through of your kind of your artistic career and your teaching career, just to sort of set the scene. Hi oh gosh, I mean, I guess, I mean, predominantly it's the teaching that's um, taken over my life. Teaching, <laughs> being a father, sort of, um, and then trying to fit being an artist in. Around. I mean, I've been teaching for over 32 years. Wow. And three different state schools and in Charterhouse for uh, 16 years, which is wow. it's a real luxury for me. I mean, yeah. to be quite honest, if it wasn't for me having moved south from the northeast of England, gone actually been one of the kind of few percent of my school that actually got to university to go to art college, I wouldn't be here having married a southerner <laughs> in a lovely area of the country talking to um, a bunch of artists and people interested. And, and it's been fantastic. I've been able to sort of tie in my teaching career with my development as an artist and I think the two go alongside each other and bring that family and all all that that entails yeah yeah no no I mean it's 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 a it's a big mission to juggle those two things isn't it um anyway Peter yeah yeah let's go let's go on so, so I mean um teaching at Charterhouse at the moment must be a bit weird with the whole lockdown experience is is there anybody at school are there like children of key workers there uh, uh, no, there's absolutely no one, um, oh. apart from a few uh, children from China who are in hotels who can't get home very easily. Oh, man. There's okay. a few issues like that going on. Yeah. Um, but generally, everyone's at home. And there's a few teachers using their offices. I know a couple of my colleagues are using the, the studio at Charterhouse, which is just around the corner from here, yeah, yeah. Um, to do their Zoom lessons. And I've spent a whole solid week of Zoom lessons, so... It, I'm getting quite used to it. I'm getting used to that kind of digital persona, which, which is you know, which is nice in one way and different, yeah. but at the same time, it's that lack of human contact. I think that yeah, that, that we really miss. So, so we we would like because they let the schools go back for like one day and then stopped them. Did that literally mean loads of the kids from overseas flew in and then had to fly back out? Yes, I guess. They did. They had to find a way to get out and, uh, yeah. and show that they've they've not got COVID, and so it had a lot of tight organisation from housemasters and teachers and the, the sort of senior management, so that that everyone could get out safely. Um, so it's quite a it's a big thing. It, yeah. It's not a school full of local kids exactly, who just yeah. go home. It's you know all around the world, which is what makes it an a, a extremely exciting. Um, Places. place work especially I, I came from a very sort of parochial northeastern school which is all white and working class so to come here and see such a vast variety of different nationalities and ways of thinking you know so yeah. people like yourself who are you know old boys and and all everyone yeah. come to watch it's, it's just a great feeling that you the community is quite strong, this international community. Yeah. And I guess that's one great thing about um, Zoom is you can do that quite quickly and easily. Exactly. So, so, so would you say there's been some things by teaching on Zoom that have been better? Is there anything that you've enjoyed more about that? I don't think any of it's better than <laughs> I think I'd be lying. Um, what it has done is given me the luxury to to be in my studio space. My kitchen is just there. My wife is cooking, cooking a curry. Saturday nice. is curry night. Nice. So, we're all coming over um, if we're allowed. Yeah, I, can, I can smell it. So the advantages of teaching um, at home is you can pop and get a coffee and you can wear your tracksuit bottoms as well as the tie. So you can, you know, you can, you can roll in just on time. And, and, it's, <laughs> it's, so, and also you can dabble around with a bit of your own work in between teaching because you're in your own sort of space which is great yeah. however i would say the studio at school around the corner is a fantastic place to be and i know my colleagues are constantly experimenting and trying things out and we feed off each other so i actually i actually miss that that one-to-one -one, the laughs that we have yeah it's a different sort of conversation you have online i think yeah yeah you do
So, so just so if we run through your sort of artistic career, a lot of it's been portraits, but it wasn't always that, was it? No, I mean, in a moment, I'll show you uh, my studio, and, and I've, I've decided to get a few bits and pieces out from my past because what? I actually made my name for doing automatic drawing, and I called them domestic doodles, and it tied in with my family life. I was working in a state school, okay. living in a little house with no space, and I decided I really wanted to push myself and become a contemporary artist. Yeah. And I, this is the time when Damien Hirst was showing at the Sartre Gallery, it's sharp, and there's yeah. this new sort of British art scene happening. And I was, I was literally going to private views all over the place just about um, every week. Check and I was out. adopting a way of working that this Korean uh, dealership, um, the Sackville Gallery became interested in my automatic doodles and they gave me a solo show in London in the, in the right. 90s. Um, and a few other galleries picked up on it. So for quite a long time, I was, I was showing domestic doodles um, and even the Museum of Modern Art in Oxford put some of my work up, a little show downstairs alongside a, a major show by Michelangelo Pistoletto, who's wow. an incredible art lover, a domestic kind of everyday artist who yeah, yeah. we met and he was really interested in my work. And I don't know what happened in between, but I suddenly went down a portrait route, which is... Well, what, why, why not? Why not show us the doodles now while we're talking about okay, them? Okay, right. Yeah, yeah take, do, us, take, us the, take us around the Take us around the It's really difficult to see because um, they're very small. That's okay. Um, this, oh, <laughs> wow, is, that's uh, it there. This, check this it out. here is a kind of a, cut, a field of doodles. And I mean, you, if you go on, if you look me up, you'll be able to see them. Um, so they're very tiny. Like, they're, they're almost like an, an Angus Martin sort of modernist gridded. Yeah, colour yeah. field, uh, not colour fields, to the grey fields, and they started off as drawings, and I would draw, have these big bits of paper lying around in everyday life, and I'd sort of have a go at sort of doing a line a day in between marking and everything like that, and they and they formed these kind of incredible diaries of my life. Yeah, I've put still yeah. thousand in... Um, this is actually one, I'm just, I'll get this one out here. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah that's okay. cool. Yeah. So this is one that I did in the 90s. Um, this is kind of, it was getting a little bit more commercial. There's a few galleries interested in that I was showing them in the West End of London. Okay. This, is, this is called Dome Doomsday. It was when the Millennium Dome was created. I created a storyboard to a disaster movie where crazy, oh, surreal things happen. to the Millennium Dome and it gets blown up and all sorts of things happen. <laughs> so each of so those... So doodles are just completely stupid, invented, <laughs> light-hearted, but within the light-hearted, there's kind of a serious yeah, message. Yeah. It's kind of dealing with a bit of modernism, but something happening in modernism where things are getting distorted. I'd watch things like zombie films <laughs> and do my domestic doodle grids or, or uh, change a nappy and bits would uh, appear in you know it's just a random things which were easy to do when you're bringing up very little kids yeah yeah exactly. um and the one piece of work that inspired me i, I bought a, a tracy m in for uh, oh, yeah. 50 quid in, the nappies, <laughs> in 96 actually you can bear, probably not see it but it's oh, yeah, got you can see the little drawing still yeah. and um yeah. it's it's got her badly bad spelling at the back of the the bit of card and the gesso and the, the pencil and, and nice. I, I kind of that inspired me to do little doodles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought, you know, she's very good at that. And there's another Tracy M in there. Oh, you got another one there as well. And, right? and I love, I've always loved her work, and I've loved the fact you can be spontaneous and say something about your life. And yeah, yeah. And so I've been a massive fan. Never met her. Love yeah. to. Um, you know, I was, I was in a world in the '90s where I wanted to be a. A good artist. I didn't think I was necessarily, but I wanted to make work that was distinctively me. And I remember a tabloid getting hold of the fact I was doing all these doodles and driving my, I think I mentioned I drove my family crazy with them. And, yeah. and it got into the papers. I don't know. So, so I became known as a doodle artist for quite a number of years. And just, just one other thing. Yeah, yeah. I got into colour field. Oh yeah, uh, serious colour field work. Which, oh wow, um, with the doodling. I did, I did a lot, a lot of them. And again, they've got lots of doodles, and the people thought they were somehow Oriental, yeah, they do Chinese have that political, kind of but actually they're not. They're silly thing, cartoons, 
things happening in them, which I don't quite understand what they are, but they're like um, sort of little stories of my life, I guess. And I did them on small scale. So I've got them out. Oh, that's cool. them on... oh, yeah, they do have a kind of. And Chris graduated from the Royal College of BC as well, and I noticed how he's using resin in oh, his okay. work. And I started using resin and doodling on top of doodles. So no, I was kind cool. of really keeping an eye on what's happening in the world, really excited by it, the art world. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And I thought, right, I can have a bit of that. I can <laughs> make huge amounts of money out of it. But I sold a bit and I showed in a few spaces and I had a few sort of supporters. And, and then something happened in 1999. I what? got a piece of work into the EP Portrait Award and I realised that I, I wanted to push the figurative a little bit more. So which is the piece? Did I see the piece just there a minute ago? Yeah, yeah. Um, here it is. Yeah, yeah. I keep this one out because it's a good. Like, this is when my uh, middle son, Joe, is now just is recently graduated with a history degree. But this was Joe. When I, I started painting my family. So rather than doodling them. That's... And it was at the time where this thing called neurotic realism was happening. In, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Art gallery and... I was kind of interested in this kind of slightly edgy, colourful, slightly photoshopped but you've, painting. You've um, still almost got a bit of that doodle stuff in there. You've got a sort of giant doodle yeah. on the T-shirt, haven't you? I guess so. Yeah, which yeah. Is kind so of it, just, it just kind of worked as an image. And, and I became, became more interested in becoming a better painter, which is kind of what I did at university in a more, very neo-expressionist way. Okay. Um, because that was fashionable in the 80s, wasn't it? Neo expressionism, yeah. yeah. Um, but I wanted to tighten up a bit and get and portraiture is just a, quite an incredible thing to try and master. And it and there's amazing standards out there to, yeah. to, to be. And when you're teaching, that's the kind of thing that gets respect, kids yeah. Yeah, like see, students like to see skill, they like to see stuff that looks like the real yeah. world, don't they? That's right. So there was a side to me that was teaching this kind of thing, but yeah. at the same time. I was trying to push my own personal boundaries. So it's that feeling of being restless yeah. and not accepting that you were just a doodler. You know, <laughs> uh, I could have taken it further, but ironically, and that's something I might come back to later, yeah. is I am kind of feel as if there's a portrait cul-de-sac happening in my life. And I, I, I like portraiture, but there needs to be more. There's yeah. Something needs, so needs so that's how you, do you, as well. you feel now it's more of like a portrait cul-de-sac. Yes, I think I need to um, rate, you know, have yeah. a look back at what I did in my youth, yeah, and maybe revisit that a little bit and bring a bit of that freshness back into my what I'm doing. I think uh, the sign of any artist who wants to move forward is, um, you know, looking at your whole history of what you've done and 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 not just relying on something new every time, but actually mm. thinking what worked in the past. How can I reinvent it? Well, absolutely. You know, <clears throat> yeah, no, you can get you can get hooked on that thing of trying to produce something new, as opposed yeah. to just trying to refine the original idea to a degree. Mm. Kind of, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, so that was that. That was the first thing you got into the portrait. Um, yes, thing. yes. But then you got other things in subsequently. Yes, there was a there was a, a string of the ones that started getting in, and I just enjoyed the opportunities. I mean, I, I thank the. Uh, the, the National Portrait Gallery for that because it, it really did help sharpen me up a bit. It was something to aspire to. And I would say to young people and students, look, mm. if you want to keep your art going beyond A level, you must apply to competitions. Yeah, you yeah. must reach out and and not just sit in your garret and do a little bit to pass a qualification, but do something a little bit more. And, and I think most human artists need that. Yeah. So it, it, it's it's interesting to um, see what's out there at the moment for young people to to have a go at. Yeah, and then you eventually won the BP portrait thing, didn't you? Yes, I mean it's a long time ago now, but yeah. um, it's uh, it was the most amazing experience in my life. I think in many ways, next to obviously the, yeah. my kids. But uh, ironically, it, it's, it's involved my children. So you know, the piece was of my daughter, who's recently graduated from Goldsmiths with a at first and she's an extremely good artist Did I see that? in a very different way to me yeah. so it's kind of there's a, a history behind everything that I do it's got to be meaningful to me otherwise yeah. what's the point you know 
did I see the painting that won there a minute ago? Yes, I mean, interestingly, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's been in hiding for many years, so it's been something I just can't can't really look at anymore because it's been <laughs> such a powerful thing in my life and I wanted to move on. But yeah, I yeah, yeah. fairly recently got it out. Let's have just, a look. Just to reevaluate what I, th I think of it and, yeah. and, and, you know, what is it about the work that, uh, there it is. Yeah, I think it's a about the work painting. That, sort of, that worked at that time. It, was, yeah. it felt as if the, the stars were aligned for me when, when it happened. And it was an incredible experience because it got me onto super yachts. It got me working with all sorts of exciting people. Julia Donaldson, for example, became a kind of a, okay. one of my sitters. Um, know. You know, there's, and I worked you know, with people who showed me aspects of life I didn't dream existed. Yeah, that's yeah, down yeah. to this portrait of my daughter who... That's I, quite strange. You know, I, I feel as if it's personal to me because no one else could have painted it, only me, you know. Yeah. Someone else painting my daughter would have done it way. Inject something of myself into the work. And I would say, in many ways, it's like a self portrait of me as a 12 year old in a funny sort of way. All oh, right. Um, so it's not, it's of my daughter. But when, <laughs> when an artist, when a portrait painter paints, what they do is they, they bring a bit of themselves into the portrait, I, I think. Mm. Well, personal portraits they do. <clears throat> Without it, see it sounding weird, there is a bit of yourself in all portraits that you, you paint. No, it doesn't sound weird at all. So, so if if you had, to, if if you would try to pin down why you thought that one won, what what would it be? Well, I, I think, I mean, I did I did question because I think one of the judges didn't actually like it that much, but oh, I right. think there was a unanimous vote. <laughs> but I think Charlotte Mullins, uh, one of the judges at the time, has written lots of books on contemporary painting. Felt like as if it was a portrait that wasn't just about portraiture. Yeah, is pointing somewhere else. And I think I, I, I listened to her when she told me that. Um, and I thought, you know, when I make a portrait, how does it point somewhere else other than just the, the appearance? Because mm. there's a lot of people do much better portraiture than me when it comes to technical skill. So what is it that makes beguiling, interesting portraits yeah. that hold you? But it's not necessarily just about skill, is it? It's about something else. Yeah. It's no, something no. I've been trying to work out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, it's arts of an elusive thing you can't grasp. And maybe that's it. As soon as you grasp the portrait, then it loses interest. Oh, maybe you're right. Maybe, maybe it's something that I'm still trying to... I looked When I brought it out last year, um, for the first time in like it, decade yeah i can't think did i do that yeah 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 it's almost like done by an alien by some other something else has put it there and and i couldn't even remember doing any of it really you couldn't actually remember Not painting properly. it no I, i've never been able to repeat it's a it's a strange thing have you ever because you do go into a different zone you should know yeah yeah yeah, yeah you do yeah. You, you, you sort of lose track of lots mm. of things and and that's a great place to be yeah for any artist, writer, musician, you know, scientist, you know, who's who's within their own zone and you get the flow yeah, and yeah. suddenly it, it's there. You're <laughs> in your kind of freaky <laughs> alpha state. And... It so, was a bit like that, yeah. I must admit. So have you ever consciously tried to kind of repeat how you did that one? The trouble is when you start doing that. Well, that's when, what I wondered, yeah. When clients want you to do something too similar, um, then it's a really tricky thing to pull off. I think it's always best to, you can always bring a bit of yourself, of, of the kind of qualities of paint and mark making and, and, and the lighting, because the lighting's very specific. You can bring a bit of that, but it will never be the same. Yeah. So it doesn't happen very often. There's a little bit of a trend for me to paint people's children's uh, children. Um, I painted uh, the George Weston's family uh, por a portrait of their their daughter who is twelve, exactly the same age as my daughter. Okay. Um, I was pleased with that. It, I kind of brought a bit of the magic of what I did of my daughter and sort of injected that into the portrait of of this twelve year old girl who I barely knew. Okay. But obviously the appearance it looked like her. Yeah. Uh, but I kind of 
mixed. The danger is, is if you keep repeating yourself with that sort of style, it starts becoming a bit, you know, yeah, a bit Andy Warhol, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think the interesting thing is, is that I remember interviewing an artist, Fred Cooming, years ago, and he sort of paints seascapes, and he was like, oh, well, you know, I'm not really trying to paint the sea. It's all about the colour or this or that. And I'd have thought with portraits, it's possibly even more complicated because you are painting a person or a human, but you're painting, you don't really want to, it just to be about the person, do you? It's got to oh, have no, something absolutely. else. No, you, you want to get a sense of the materials and the media mm. and the process and the history of the painting. And that more and more, and I think this is where my doodling comes back to me, is within my portraiture, more and more I'm trying to show the, I suppose, the archaeology, that the layers of the work and the process and the thinking, the automatic mistakes that are made and then how they're covered over and built up again. So you get this kind of hovering of abstraction happening of the abstraction of the materials Did so that, that it's less about s simulating kind of the sort of photographic appearance of someone and more about a feeling yeah, um, yeah. can i just show you yeah yeah that's what i was going to say show us, piece. Yeah. oh yeah show yeah. us some of the more recent portrait yeah. things you've done as it were <clears throat> so they've been lying around in my studio so I, now this piece here, I don't know whether you can see it very yeah, well, yeah, but yeah, it's it about five or six layers of um, acrylic, and it's called toothache. <laughs> it's, you know when you have a toothache, all you can think about is a toothache? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I think I have suffered from hideous toothaches before, and it's that feeling during lockdown. If I suddenly got one of my abscesses in my teeth, I love sweet things. Um, and I'm a bit obsessed that you know, my teeth are a bit wonky as well, not, <laughs> not perfect. And I thought, what's the feeling if I did a self portrait? Yeah, what's yeah. the feeling of that toothache? How can I make a portrait that still looks a little bit like me, but gives a sense of that uneasy with yourself, your in the inside of your face, and how you feel about yourself in your face? Do you understand what I mean? Oh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's quite disturbing. The vulnerability. Painting. So, there's kind of yeah. many, many layers mm. of um. I don't, know. I don't know whether you could oh, see it. Oh, you hold it. Of, when you hold it back, it's bits good. Bits of face, a bit of teeth, bits of teeth. Oh, yeah, yeah. Jagged sort of marks in graphite. It's done. It's not done carefully and it's not done particularly with, with, with a sense of dexterity like some of my oil painting. But it, it, I felt as if having done it, this first one I did, yeah. I was getting somewhere with it. Something yeah, yeah, yeah. Happening. Maybe, um, it, maybe it sort of sums up that sort of feeling of madness lockdown as well. Yes. <laughs> I didn't want it to be too Francis Bacon because there's a well, lot of angsty portraiture out there and I see some of it coming from my students um, because it's young people do have that and there's quite a lot of sort of strong portraiture coming out of young people in schools. But I yeah. want it to be more personal about me, okay. but not, not a screaming Francis Bacon, but more of a oh. question, but this is how I feel in myself. It's like... It's it's less intellectual and more about feeling. Yeah, no, it is totally, totally. And the, the most recent one I did was yeah. of, of my wife. I've got all these on Instagram oh, right. if anyone wants to have a closer look. It's got better close up shots. Now, this is oh, my, cool. my wife is a mm -hmm. psychotherapist and she, yeah. she works for a local special needs school as a school counselor. Okay. Uh, she's online. And I was wanting to get that sense of not not having done any counselling myself necessarily, but from the conversations I've had and, and kind of seeing her locked in a room with a screen. Yeah. So my internet looks like it's a bit unstable at the moment. I'll, I'll try and move around a bit. Sometimes it does. That. And I wanted to, to, to bring in lots of doodles and layers and bits and pieces chalked on diagrams of maybe how how it is to be an online counsellor. Not that it's saying I am an online counsellor. It's no, just no, no. Mark and the, the, the sort of language. It's actually and really I nice. I like, I like that doodly kind of feeling and I like the different bits of glasses. It's almost got a kind of cubist feel to it as well. Really? Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. As I say, it's, not, it's got no reference to any art history, unlike no. maybe some of my other work. My portrait has a very strong reference to art history, but this yeah. is just more me drawing and playing with materials. And I was very interested in um, someone who's on the autistic spectrum. My life, my, my wife uh, lent me the book, 
yeah. um, by D Dr. Camilla Pang, and she's been trying to explain humans <laughs> and her experiences within autism, okay. how, you, how you communicate, and she's got amazing diagrams in there. Oh, yeah, that's it. These little diagrams and doodles of oh, man, yeah. how she feels, and I kind of, They're not I've been looking at those carefully and thinking, how can I incorporate an element of that into my into my portraits, I guess. Let's so, say keeping the scale smaller. Yeah. Um, okay. Completely non-commercial. Yeah. Feeling the luxury of not really trying to appeal to anyone other than me trying to explore um, a direction for myself, I guess. But it's interesting. You're trying to bring those doodles back into. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that that's a conscious decision, isn't it, to try and fold yeah. that what you were doing in the past back into the present. Yes, I mean, I'm not there yet, and I think it's it, you've got to play a very subtle game with how to... So it doesn't just look like as if they've been deliberately implanted on there, so it looks yeah. part of the process, and, and, and it feels genuine and authentic. Because there's a lot of painters who use a bit of, I call it, gestural mannerism. Yeah, 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 a lot of that. Where it's got a lot of <laughs> get hard work to sweep here, and yeah. <laughs> flat there. It's just all very mannered, and, and does it... You know, it's decorative. So it's like yeah. trying not to be decorative, you know? It's like... Okay. You're you know, working against it being pretty, basically. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, little yeah, bit. yeah. And do you Again, feel... Do you... I have to, to be provided this amazing little space um, by the school. Um, That's... Very privileged position. So I can do stuff. Like, but... You know, just try something out. Like, I'll just show you... Yeah, go on, show us, show us. No, this is an example of me just uh, wanting to... <laughs> Try something out. Oh wow, that's cool. So, so you kind of. So how did you make that? that? How did you make? My it? wife bought a bunch of these mats because we got. We, oh you right. know, We get very muddy work, and I just put spray on them, and I got this nice resist. So what I want to do now? Is, yeah. Can you see? Am I yeah. on? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Point, point it down again. Point it down because it's cool. Oh, I think... I'm getting a bit. It's holding my uh, MacBook Pro. <laughs> position. So what I, I'm, I'm thinking about now, maybe maybe people could suggest something to me, is, is I want to do doodles on it, not necessarily portraits, but yeah. something, something that's a bit. So I was I was trying this out on another bit of paper. So I got those oil bars. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was, I'm trying out, sort of just seeing what happens. Oh, that's when cool. I doodle. For me, you know, it's got. Uh, for me, it's... Things, like trying what happens when I use layers of. Of paint to doodle, intriguing. Um, scratching on surfaces. It's so, intriguing. So I've got piles of stuff here yeah. in my studio, which I've, I've turned around most of my official portraits. And yeah. I've got, I always keep this one up because I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm pleased with that one. That's a good. Uh, one. My series, yeah. Head Boy Head Girl series. But I'm trying to just have have things around me that sort of. Yeah. that can make me think differently. So, so this this one here, for example, of my wife again. Again, yeah, it's on Instagram that. if people want to have a look. It's really cool. Yeah. I think Online um, child therapy stuff. But using stencils so I, I, on Amazon. Amazon's great. You know, you, know, you shouldn't really be buying from Amazon. Cass Arts is even better, but there's a lot of these stencils you can spray. Oh, wow, that's really cool. I didn't know you could get them. surfaces to break things up. You can order those so, off Amazon, can you? So I've got kind of various things that I'm going to be playing around with. And I've got, you know, various other small... Again, I've gone really small. This is of Lady Di and Charles. Oh, wow, that's um, cool. I've been doing... That's after them. you've been watching Again, Netflix. <laughs> and some more lockdown portraits of me looking moody. Oh, nice. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> and here, this is an interesting one. I've been clearing out my mother's house because uh, she died recently. And... Um, okay. I found this old watercolor of the Velvet Underground. When I oh, was so cool! I love it. But that's go. got um, that's got that's <laughs> almost got bits of everything in it. Yeah, just to in show it. that I have a past. <laughs> I, I was cool once, but not anymore. But, uh, anyway. but, but that that's almost <laughs> it's almost got everything in it. It's got a portrait. It's got the yeah, I know. It's, no, got it's, like, the... it's got the and and I it's interesting because I, there's that one and then there's this one I did in '08. Okay. which is of a seance, part of my kind of uncanny series that I huh. did, which I did a whole series of, and they became fairly popular at one stage in the, the noughties. Okay. Um, I can see a really strong link between my teenage yeah. stuff and 
So there's, a, you know, even though I'm changing from portraiture to um, to doodling to abstraction to work, it's all the same. It's all kind of there's a trajectory. There's a there's a thread you can pull across all of it, and you probably find that, don't you, Rob? Yeah, I know work. this. <laughs> you listen to Jesus and the Mary Chain and you no. do this abstract work, but then it probably all yeah. links back to your past. You know, it's a bit of psychotherapy we all need to, to work out where we're at with our exactly. work. <laughs> exactly. Um, it reminds me of um, uh, Sigma Polka. You could get a quite a nice Sigma Polka feel going with both the right. portraits and the dots. Yeah. Either feel oh, be quite okay. Yeah. I might look a few ideas up. Yeah. So, so look, just before we let it out into the world, um, yeah. Do you just want to show us like the materials you use, just the stuff? Okay. Your, because everybody loves okay. to see a little um, your kind of paints and okay. your stuff. Right down there is some old Christmas decorations and some bird food. Oh, nice one! Uh, <laughs> you know, we use for all sorts of things. But uh, okay, we got different types of brushes there. Again, not not beautifully ordered. You know, I'd, I'd kill my students if I if they left it in a yeah. state like this. I really would. Oh, that, I but think that's. A range of brushes from quite oh super big ones yeah uh, nice I, I love these brushes to work with. yeah they're fun aren't they although they're a nightmare to yeah. clean and, and i've discovered these chinese brushes which have got a lovely kind of feel to them like oh, they're cool. cass arts um they've got a nice flat you know and the, yeah. the sort of pencils i like to work okay with. yeah these kind of eight um Stabler pencils. Okay, That's very cool. Random. Yeah, I don't know why, but uh, what I've what sort of paints do you got use? Got an easel from school. The benefits of being a teacher. There's a bit <laughs> of skill kit there, but I sometimes use it when I teach <laughs> online. Um, okay. Yeah. Let's see. W. H. Smiths. Oh, five classy! Quid. You got to have those. I like it. I like it. Absolutely, you've got to have them. Um, yeah. Obviously, oil bars. Oil bars. Um, nice. Nice. Um, Which brands of paints do you use? Is it oils or oh, acrylics? This is, this, is, this is what you like to ask, isn't it? The yeah, yeah. Of paint. I'm, I'm not sponsored by anyone, but I must. Admit, <laughs> <laughs> if you look at in here, you'll spot mostly Michael Harding. No, you. Oh man, you've got that's probably about five hundred pounds worth of paint in there. <laughs> yeah. No joke. <laughs> but you know, you've got to let them last, though. You know, it's, yeah. you don't have to put things on too thickly. Absolutely. Although not I, if it's if Michael it's Harding. Good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I just want to show you one other thing. Yeah, yeah. Go um, go. This here is a uh, my latest gallery space that I'm playing around with. It's my when I cleared out my mother's house. <laughs> that is house, so cool. There's a, there's a there's a doll's house that <laughs> she's Danish, and it's a Danish doll's house that was made by my great grandfather, who was an art collector. Seriously. And there's lots of old photographs of my my mother as a child, and when my mum and dad got married, and I want to curate a little exhibition in there of their. That is so work. cool. Well, there you go. That's my own personal gallery space. And that's really cool. Mine, so. <laughs> I love it. <clears throat> I love it. Right. Um, I think... This is my kitchen as well, just to show. Oh, yeah, go on. Let's, let's see the kitchen. Let's see it all. To, <laughs> directly linked to uh, everyday family life, you know. <laughs> right. Nice. P Peter, thank you so much. I've absolutely loved that. All sorts of things I didn't know. I love the, um, the way you're moving on from the, um, the portraiture or sort of fighting against it while playing with it and, uh, you know, trying yeah. to keep it as a sort of yeah real art thing as opposed to just a replication of what's literally there so thank you so much i really enjoyed chatting it was really really good Bomb